day in forensics is, is never quite the same. I'm a forensic scientist at the Metropolitan Police Service in the Biology and Trace Department. We examine items for body fluids and submit uh, any body of fluids found for DNA profiling. So when we arrived at the scene, our priority was to sort of address what evidence was present and preserve that. So document what we could thought was a area and do a blood search and sample and preserve other areas around that um, and then target any items that may be suitable for an urgent examination because we thought they might be the ones likely to be associated with the assault. There was some blood spatter in the bushes and so we examined that and sort of recorded it and sampled uh, and at this time the body was being photographed because there was a possible shoe mark on it so we were not doing anything with the body but then they're just about finished doing that when it came on to rain so we had to sample these areas very very quickly so we would normally take photographs and maybe do a diagram of the body but in this case it wasn't possible because of the rain coming on which may remove any evidence that was present so we did that hurriedly. Common. Well, there's a belt. Between the body and the area of blood spatter that I mentioned previously, uh, there was a belt and it looked fairly clean and it wasn't uh, covered in other detritus. It was sort of loose in the undergrowth. So we, we thought this might be, if it's not from Mauricio, it, it might be connected to somebody else that had had contact with him. And so this is it in the laboratory under examination. So uh, a blood stain, a very small blood stain, as you can see, these are, the scale is one millimeter. So it's approximately one millimeter in diameter was found uh, and this was sampled. So having identified a, a possible suspect with the belt, that did not necessarily mean that person was connected to the assault on Mauricio because that belt, although it looked like it had been there fairly recently left there, uh, did not necessarily mean it was in, in um, contact. It may have been there just before the assault and blood had got on it like it had got on the vegetation. So the, the investigation team were keen to show that that person had been in contact with the body. and. We, so we examined all the swabs and we submitted those uh, and we did get a full profile matching the same suspect that was identified on uh, one of the body swabs. So that linked him to, to Mauricio. This is the shirt of Mauricio uh, that was taken from him. This is a picture that was taken possibly at the post-mortem by Socos or crime scene manager um, prior to it being submitted to the laboratory. So that's the front. As you see, it's quite extensively blood-stained. That is the back. Uh, and there is, it's quite grubby. Uh, there's blood staining and dirt present and there were <clears throat> where this is rucked up the indications of a shoe mark present which was in dirt not in blood staining. See, <laughs> there's a lot of notes. <laughs> the shirt that was examined was examined over a period of about two to three months not every day but but Quite often there were whole days spent examining that shirt because there were so many different evidence types from it. And so, and also to do the diagrams and photographs takes time as well. So that took a long, long time. It was, and they were, she did a very, very good job as well. So uh, excellent notes. And they were used in court uh, when we gave evidence. So. so that's the shirt as it was received. And this is the blood staining which matched the assailant. 
We examined the shirt for blood staining and there was some spatter on, on the shirt, on the upper front. And some of it could obviously be from Mauricio himself as his blood had bled and there was sort of dilute blood staining extensively over the shirt. But in the consideration that it may have been uh, from an assailant, we selected several uh, spots or spatters and most of these were one millimetre or less in size. Yeah, 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 this one here. So it was examined um, with fibre optic light for any blood staining and then areas that were considered uh, pertinent such as <clears throat> areas of the outside and also the inside uh, near the openings. Uh, were examined with low power microscopy for any very tiny blood stains. One of those matched the subsequent def defendant, so, and, and that was sufficient to charge him.